Well, hello everyone. We are so honored to welcome you to our Carolina experience where we get an opportunity to connect with you directly. I just believe that this is going to be an epic opportunity for you to be empowered with the Word of God. What do you think? I think you're talking good stuff right now because we're the church that likes to love on people and we like to embrace each other. Like you embracing me now, right? Ooh, girl, listen, so the stay close. It's going to be wow. It's going to be an epic experience. I do want to welcome you into the warm embrace of Carolina Church. And I guarantee you that when you leave this experience, you're not only going to be connected to us, but you're going to be empowered and you're going to be blessed. Stay tuned to our digital worship leader. Hey, what up, family? I am Minister Paul Thompson, and I am your digital worship leader for the week. Listen, my job is to let you feel the warm embrace of Carolina Church from wherever you are in the world. So get in the comments section and let me know who you are, where you're from, and how I can pray for you this week. Matter of fact, you don't even have to wait. You can email us prayer requests at any time, 24-7, at prayer at carolinachurch.org. And we have a team of prayer warriors that is ready to go to God on your behalf. We're praying that, that God would do something supernatural for you this week that would bless the situation that you're currently going through. Listen, at any time during our service today, you can take the next step and connect with our Carolina Connect family by getting social with us. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on, we're on Twitter, we're even on YouTube. We can't wait to connect with you past today and welcome you into our daily growing body of believers. Listen, y'all, our digital worship team is here for all of your spiritual needs. You just had a baby. You want to have that baby dedicated. Come on, we got you. you. You're thinking about getting married or you're already married, just need a little bit of counseling, somebody to talk to. I got you. <laughs> you, you, you. If you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and, 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 and you want to be water baptized, listen, we can take you through all of those next steps. And I can promise you, we're going to throw you the biggest party in your honor. But listen here, the point is that our digital worship team is here solely to service you. Just drop me a comment and I'll walk you through the next steps of whatever you need. I'm here simply for you. Email us at any time at info at carolinachurch.org. All right, now get ready. Our live stream from 9901 Allentown Road is just minutes away, y'all. Are you ready to worship? Come on, welcome into the warm embrace. It's worship time, y'all. Let's go. the story that I have, but I like what Brother Zaccardi said. He said, but I serve a God who has done it for me again and again and again and again. We serve an all-knowing, all-powerful God on this morning, even through this COVID season. God is still worthy of the glory and the praise and the honor, all of the adoration on today. We thank God because you just don't know what he has done for us. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you into the warm embrace of Carolina Church on this college send-off Young Adult Sunday. We thank you all for worshiping with us 
on this morning for all of our first and second time guests that are out there. Welcome into the warm embrace of Carolina. We are so very honored that you have decided to worship with us on today as you are streaming from your homes with your families around you. We just say thank you. There are so many other churches that you could have been worshiping with on this morning, but we're grateful that you stopped by Carolina to worship with us on today. We're grateful for our digital worship leaders that are out there this morning. We are grateful for uh, Minister Paul Thompson, who will be leading us this morning. So we ask that you would engage with us on today as we're online. If you have any questions, prayer request. We have a whole team who is here to support you on today and to make sure that we are meeting your needs as a ministry and as a body of believers. And we ask right now that you would go ahead and just drop us a line and let us know where you're worshiping from. If you're in Upper Marlboro, Bowie, Washington, D.C., if you're all the way in Dallas, Texas, Miami, Florida, wherever you're worshiping from, just go ahead and drop us a line. Let us know where you're coming from and just say, hey, give a digital shout out to those who are worshiping with you. We want to make sure that we're engaging with you on this morning and that we are worshiping God together, giving him the glory for the good things that he has done for us, for how he has brought us over, for how he has brought us through, for how he's taken care of us, for how he's placed a hedge of protection around us during this time. We just want to give God glory. So go ahead and give him a clap of praise right now. Use your emojis. Lift those hands. Give him a clap of praise. We just want to say thank you, God, for all that you have done. So go ahead, drop us a line. Say good morning to those who are worshiping with us on today. We want to just make sure that we are all worshiping together as a body of believers on this morning because that's who Carolina is. We want to introduce you all, if you are our first or second time guest this morning, to who Carolina is. We are a body of believers who are making disciples. We're maturing believers and mastering our lives to live to our fullest potential in Christ Jesus. So on this morning, again, we want to thank you for worshiping with us. We want to make sure that you are connected to Carolina Church. Go ahead, if you haven't already, like our social media pages. You can find us on Facebook or on Instagram. Go ahead and, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you can make sure you're always receiving any of our latest messages, our Bible study during the week, our one more minutes from our pastor. So make sure that you're staying connected with our ministry. You can always go over to our website at carolinachurch.org for more information and to find out how to connect with us digitally. Amen. And so we're now going to uh, go over into a video presentation where we're going to go into our offering and we're going to take a look at the new app that Carolina Church is uh, pushing out to all of our members and to all of our visitors and all of our guests. Again, just a way to keep you connected to what's going on here at Carolina Church. So if you take a moment, we're just going to go over into our uh, video presentation. So go ahead, stay tuned and take a look. Amen. Hebrews 13, 16 says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The greatest need of the world is the need to accept Jesus Christ. Do you know what happens when you give and sow into the body of Christ and his church? Here at Carolina, when you give your tithes and offerings, we're able to continue to meet the needs of our church, the surrounding community, and so into our local and international partners. There are four easy ways to give securely. Simply text Carolina Church, all one word, to 77977 to give instantly in less than 30 seconds. Download the new Carolina Church app, available in your app store on Apple or Android devices by texting Carolina Church app to 77977 or you can give by mail and send your check payable to CNBC to us at Carolina Missionary Baptist Church, 9901 Allentown Road, Fort Washington, Maryland, 20744. And lastly, you can give online at carolinachurch.org forward slash giving. Did you know you can find Carolina Church in your app store right on your phone? 
Download our app today by texting Carolina Church app to 77977. Inside, you'll find easy access to Carolina all week long. Once you have downloaded the app, choose your login credentials and select which ministry push notifications you'd like to receive. When you're all logged in, look around and get to know what's inside. On the home feed, you'll find all the latest sermons, podcasts, and Carolina Connect news updates. Tap Connect to get to know us even more. Here you'll find an official greeting from our senior pastor, Pastor Anthony E. Moore and Lady Cynthia Moore. You can also watch us live right inside the app. Get involved and join one of our many service ministries, request prayer, or find out what events are coming up. Also inside our official Carolina Church app, you can give directly any day of the week. Whether you choose to give one time or prefer recurring giving, it only takes a few seconds to sow your seed to grow our church and community. Wait, there's more. Back inside the app, there's also easy access links to our latest sermon playlist, the Carolina Church Rewind podcast, and links to get social with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download the app today and never lose access to what God is doing at Carolina Church. Text Carolina Church app to 77977 or simply search Carolina Church in your Apple or Google App Store to download today. Did you? Amen, amen, amen. So make sure that you're going out there and you are uh, downloading the Carolina app so you can stay connected to all that we have going on here uh, in our ministry. We're now going to go ahead and prepare uh, to give unto the Lord of what belongs unto him. Uh, according to the word of God on this morning, we want to ensure that we're bringing our tithes and our offering unto the Lord. Um, as you saw in our video, we have many different ways that you can give here at Carolina. You can give through text, text to give. You can uh, give through going online to carolinachurch.org. Um, through uh, uh, push pay, you can give. Um, so many different ways you can mail a check um, directly into the ministry. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are still giving, um, even during this uh, period uh, of COVID. Um, we thank everyone who has continued to support um, this ministry through your tithes and through your offering. Uh, so please continue to give uh, so that we can continue uh, to build the kingdom of God. Um, even through this time, uh, we are grateful uh, for each and every one of you ha who has uh, given so generously to this ministry. Um, on this morning, I ask that you do remember our pastor, uh, Anthony Moore, and First Lady Cynthia Moore, that as you are giving, that you would give unto our pastors as well. Um, as all of our members know, um, our pastor does not accept a salary uh, from our church, and he lives off of what we give to him. So we ask on this morning that you would uh, please give generously to our pastor this morning, uh, to our First Lady, to our First Family on today. Um, again, uh, you can use all the different ways uh, that we offer here at Carolina um, as you are looking to give. And, and know that, Carolina, we are on the move, even through this time. You know, so many churches have, you know, not been able to be sustained uh, through uh, this COVID season. Uh, many ministries have shut down, but we're so grateful unto God that he has kept us um, in spite of all that we have gone through. Uh, God is still a keeper. Um, he is the keeper of his word, and, and we're just grateful for all that he's done for this ministry. And we want to make sure that we can continue uh, to push forward in ministry even through this time. You know, we don't know how long we're going to be here, but in spite of it, the word of God still needs to go forward. And so we want to make sure that we're able to do all that we can to continue uh, to be here to support all of our members um, and those in the community who are in need. And that's what your offerings um, and your tithe, that's what it goes to. Um, to ensure that no men, um, no member of our ministry goes um, with uh, with a want and that we are able to meet the needs of those um, who are in need um, and those in our community who are in need of support. Um, so please continue uh, to give. So I'm going to, you know, as you are preparing your, your offering, we're going to kick it over to our announcements video. So begin to prepare your offering and pay attention to um, our, our monitors, um, to your screens as we go into our announcements for the week. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome into the warm embrace. Summer isn't over yet. While we're physically distancing, we are plugging in more and staying connected here at Carolina. Here's what's coming up in our latest news. Our ministry teams are on the grow. This week, our gatekeepers will meet online. Check in with your ministry leader this week to find out when your next team meeting is and stay connected. This week, there are four ways to connect to the Word and join us in prayer. All 18 to 35-year-olds are invited to join us this Monday night for the conversation on Zoom at 8 p.m. This candid conversation is hosted by our own Josh Moore and Minister Lauren Salters. Get your prayer on with us. Meet us Wednesday morning at 6 to 6.15 a.m. for our morning prayer call. Catch up with our Wednesday Summer Rewind at noon on Facebook, inside the Carolina Church app, or at carolinachurch.org. And grab the kids and tune in for Saturday's Blast Zone Live on Zoom at 2 to 3 p.m. for ages 2 to 8 years old and 7 to 8 p.m. for ages 9 to 17 years old. Email info at carolinachurch.org for secure login link and let us know your kids are ready to blast off. Ladies, it's time for another night of fun. We've invited Sister Dallas Macon of Divine Order to help us organize in style by decluttering, organizing, and simplifying our wardrobe before fall. Join us for a fun night on Zoom Friday, August 21st at 7 to 8.30 p.m. Invite your girls. All are welcome to attend. RSVP today to info at carolinachurch.org for more details. We might not be able to connect physically, but spiritually we are still gathering and having a good time together. Join the Young at Heart Ministry for a virtual game of bingo for ages 62 and up, Saturday, September 5th at 4 p.m. on Zoom. RSVP today for credentials and to receive your game card by emailing info at carolinachurch.org. Welcome to our segment called One More Minute. I couldn't wait to get to you today because I want to be certain that you get this spiritual vitamin for the week. Here it is. Be careful who you trust. Salt and sugar looks the same. That's my time. Thank you for yours. Stay home, stay safe, stay connected, and stay Carolina Strong Family. For more on the latest happenings at Carolina, visit us at carolinachurch.org. Now let's get back to worship. Amen, amen. Make sure you're staying connected to everything that we have going on here at Carolina. We got a lot happening. I can't wait for that bingo game. I'm definitely going to be tuned into that. All right, so... I'm very excited on this morning. This is something that we like to do every year. We always like to celebrate uh, those who are going uh, back to school um, during this season. And so, you know, even though we are in this time, we have a lot of our college students who are returning to campus. Some have actually already uh, gone back to school. And so we always wanna make sure that we're arming um, our college students and we wanna make sure that we're celebrating them. Um, as they are uh, heading back to school. So that's why we always celebrate uh, this college send-off Sunday um, every year. And so we did not, uh, you know, want to make sure we didn't rob um, our college student this year. So we're going to be celebrating them this year as well. Uh, we're just going to do it in a little bit of a different style. So go ahead, watch those monitors. 
we have some folks here for you that just want to say a few words. Hello, my name is Dosha Parker. I will be entering my sophomore year at Bowie State University. A few of my achievements include receiving a word of excellence for my academic achievements and being a part of Dorm Hall Council as head treasurer. I would like to say that over the course of your college career, you will learn new things about yourself and encounter new experiences that will help you progress and grow as a person. Have a blessed day. My name is Tamara Brown. I'm an upcoming sophomore at Prince George's Community College majoring in accounting. Hey Carolina, this is Caleb, and I'm going to a and in August. Um, I'll be a freshman majoring in mechanical engineering, and I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you to Pastor Moore, First Lady, and the entirety of Carolina Church for individually each doing so much for me, growing me up in the church, helping me to become the person I am today. You know, just being there for me, giving me words of wisdom, giving me, you know, encouragement when I needed that. I mean, every single person has put in something at that church to create the person that you guys see before you now. So I will make you guys proud. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor, for instilling in me and encouraging me to move forward to go back to get my education. I'm going to Strayer. Yes. That's my business administration class. See that big fat A? Yes. In business. And in communication. That's the communication class. I'm trying to get to the business part of it real fast. I feel honored and blessed and and inspired. Look at that. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, for embracing me. Look forward to the future. I am growing a garden, and I'm going to build that grocery store. Yes, that black-owned Christian ran grocery store. Be blessed. Hello, guys. My name is Kiara. I hope all of you are staying well and safe during this time that we are fighting off this virus. I am creating this video to let you guys know that I will be attending Morgan State University this upcoming fall class of 2024, double majoring in psychology and elementary education. I want to thank all of you guys for your help and dedication to getting me this far. I want to thank God for all of my friends and family he has placed in my life. I want to thank him for all of the lessons, healings, and blessings he has awarded me with. And I ask that he just continue to watch over me. Who's a bear? I'm a bear. Thank you guys. Stay safe. Peace and blessings. Amen. So we're grateful again for all of those who are returning uh, back to school this year. We're asking that God will cover and protect them. Those who are going to be living on campus, um, already moving into your dormitories, that God will cover you, um, that you don't go with the spirit of fear because God has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Uh, so we are asking that God will cover all of our college kids uh, with a hedge of protection around them, uh, that they will be safe, that they will be well uh, during the season. Um, as you saw, those were some of the items that we put in the care package that we'd like to give to them as they are heading back to school. Uh, so all of our uh, returning uh, students will be receiving uh, packages from Carolina Church. Uh, so we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. So we're now going to get ready to slide into uh, this segment uh, for our Young Adult Sunday that's going to be led uh, by our very own Minister Lauren Salter and uh, Brother Josh Moore. Um, so we will be celebrating uh, our young adults today in a, a way of a panel discussion. Um, there is so much that's going on in the world today. And so our discussion this day and our theme for the morning is SFDD, Same Fight, Different Day. 
So on August 28th, uh, there's going to be an unprecedented event that's going to be taking place just a few miles away in downtown Washington, D.C. Um, the event entitled the Get Off Our Neck uh, Commitment March on Washington will be taking place led by the Reverend Al Sharpton's National Action Network. Um, so the fact of the matter is it's, it's 2020, but we are in a very similar climate um, that we were in back in August of 1963 when Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King um, gave his I Have a Dream speech um, at the historic March on Washington event. Um, and some of the same issues that took place then are still taking place now. Um, so uh, the purpose of the march uh, in 1963 was to advocate for the civil and economic rights of, of black people. And here we are 57 years later uh, fighting the same exact fight. Um, but this march is to be seen as a launching pad uh, for other things that are soon to come, you know, as we see our Black Lives Matter uh, movement um, that is happening. And what we find is that this current generation, the millennials, the, the Gen Zers, um, have been at the forefront of some of the nation's most recent protests, um, demonstrations, um, and a lot of it has been as a result of the, the George Floyd incident. So. Um, this morning, we have pulled together a panel of young adults who are going to educate us um, on this movement, um, how young adults are responding uh, to recent events that are happening, um, and more so how they're leading the charge and how we're hoping to see change in America. So after our sermonic presentation by our guest psalmist this morning, we're grateful uh, for Zacardi Cortez, who has blessed us. That is a singing brother uh, anointed uh, uh, by God. So after um, our sermonic selection from him this morning, our panel discussion, SFDD, led by Minister Lauren Salter and Brother Josh Moore. Stay tuned. It's on the way. God bless you. I just want to thank Pastor Anthony Moore and First Lady Cynthia Moore for having me on this Sunday. And uh, we're going to bless God just a little bit more. If you know God is able to bring you out again, if you know he's able to heal you again, if you know he's able to do it again, I want you to get up wherever you are and join me on this next song. Let's go. Right there. Come on. The song says, just got the call I've been waiting on, telling me I got the job, yeah. I just got approved for my new crib, picking up the keys tomorrow. The sun is shining brighter than it ever had. Yeah. I'm smiling on my face, gotta thank God for that. Say this. 
What's up, what's up, what's up? We miss you guys so much, but thank you for, for joining us on this morning. Oh, I got to introduce myself? Yeah, you oh, got man, it. All right. What's <laughs> up, y'all, man? My name is Joshua Moore, you know, yours truly. And I'm Minister Lauren Salter, and we're so grateful to have our panelists with us this morning. Pastor Stefan Lindsay from Zion Church, Elder Javante Wheeler from Judah Christian Ministries, and Sam Hale from Carolina. Ooh. Hey, look, man, I know y'all y'all not here. So, you know, clap your hands through the computer. Give us a virtual. Drop some, Give you know, emojis. hand claps. Yes. Emojis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drop them. We need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, once again, thank you for joining. And, um, you know, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in yeah. to this uh, panel. Um, so, first question. Um with everything going on, this is an open question, so whoever wants to answer, uh, feel free to jump in. Uh, with everything going on in society um, today, um, uh, you know, involving race, um, how do you guys um, push through everything that's going on? What motivates you um, to not get down? What do you do spiritually that, you know, allows you to you know, get up the next day and say, you know, we got to continue to fight. Or, you know, I can't allow what happened yesterday to get me down or, you know, bring my morale down. All right. I guess I'll go ahead and start off. <laughs> uh, one of the, the first things that me and my wife do daily is we pray. We pray together. Um, before, you know, we would pray in the mornings and, uh, you know, with, with COVID going on, along with a lot of the social injustice, we wanted to make a point to pray together and not just pray for specific things, but pray for our society, for our loved ones. Uh, there's a lot of different things that are going on right now. And it's, um, you know, it's really easy to get discouraged, to get down. Um, along with COVID and the social injustice, there's also unemployment, right? So there's a lot of different things that are happening in our society, and we want to make it a point, one, to, to make sure we reach out to loved ones, make sure we reach out to friends, uh, family, immediate and extended. Uh, we do different video chats to stay connected. I've recently um, you know, been a part of a lot of different podcasts within the society as well. So being part of that, um, you know, as society says, stay woke, right? So make sure you're watching the news, but understanding that some of the things that are in the news are propaganda as well. And um, just staying prayed up, staying faithful, staying consistent, staying persistent in your approach uh, will help you get through the day and, and help you get through these situations that we're encountering in our society. Okay, all right. Anybody else want to answer? You got a remark? I'll go. Brother Sam pretty much covered the main thing. Prayer is the main thing. Yeah. And also on top of prayer, praise. And not just in the dance, but make sure the things that you speak. Because if you speak well of God, it'll bring you in a better mood than what you see. Okay. All right. I like that. I like that. Okay. All right. So what advice or um, additionally to, of course, you know, the church will you know, continue to pray for those within the community, but not even advice. How would you say um, would be the best way the church could provide support um, to, you know, the young adults who are on the forefront, you know, pushing this movement, uh, pushing for change? What, what supports do you think the church can offer um, to those young adults? 
Got you. I'll go. First of all, I just want to say thank y'all. Um, honored to be here. Um, I think that's a, that's a great question because, you know, it hurts to kind of say this, but, you know, I got to be real about it. At one point, the church, and I'm speaking universally, was known to be the cornerstone, so to speak, of the community. Right, right. And I can't say that that's really the case um, majority, for majority of churches, um, and there's so many layers to that. And, but I think this is a great opportunity for the church to kind of, as Michael Todd says, represent Jesus. Um, there are various reasons why the church, for many people, you mentioned the word church, like the, the average person that's on, that's on the block, like I don't want nothing to do with it no more. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they, they've seen a lot of hypocrisy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You come out here when, when something go on, but outside of a crisis, where are you? Okay. Unless it's Thanksgiving, unless you're coming to drop off some food, but like where are you for real, for real? Right, right. And I think it's a great time for us to, when you talk about how the church can support young adults mm -hmm. uh, and millennials who have maybe a lot of ideas and innovative ways that we can be in the community, I think sometimes it's just as simple as pulling in the young adults to say, I hear you. Okay. Well, what, what ideas do y'all got? How, how can we get behind it? And not always pushing our agenda and saying, now young adults, get with this. Right. Or pushing our agenda. It's, it's, it's almost the philosophy of inside thinking where we say, here's what we have. How can you make it better? Right. Versus leaning on the young adults and say, you tell me what you have. And I want to get behind that. You know what I mean? But it's, it's a pivotal time for us to kind of make some shifts, man. Uh, in the community, but we got to be open to hear, to hear. Yeah, okay. I, so, basically what I get from what you were saying is that there has to be a more consistent presence of the church within the community. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, instead of the church being the, uh, pushing, you know, an agenda, or not necessarily pushing an agenda, but trying to take over, allowing those who are already in the forefront to kind of present the ideas and have the church, you know, be the support, pretty much, that's what you're saying? Absolutely, man, because again, we, if, if COVID didn't show us anything, one thing it showed us is that God does not have to be boxed into yeah. these four walls. You're right, you're right. If Paul could, if God could use his spirit to move letters in the heart of man, hmm. then surely he can use technology, and other ideas, we, we get this thing like, oh, man, we got to be with him. And the fellowship is good. He told us, don't, don't forsake that, right? Right. But um, it, it, it just goes to show we, we got to be more innovative. This, this Here's what I say. I've been telling creatives lately, if we stop saying what if, we will become what was. That's the same thing with the church. Blockbuster stopped saying what if, and they became what was. Taxi cab stopped saying what if, and they became what was. It's time for the church to come together and ask those questions. What if? It's a new day, yeah. and we got to be more present, but we also have to be more innovative in our approach. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I like that. I like that. Anybody else? He hit it on the, it, yeah. <laughs> Hammer, okay. All right. So we're going to move on. So I don't want to get too political, um, you know, because I know that's, that's not why we're here, but, um, you know, we do have a topic to discuss. So with that being in mind, President Trump has recently come out saying that he feels as if he is, um, you know, the best president for our community um, and has, yeah, has done more for our community than yeah. any president um, in the past. What is, um, what did you guys take on that? <laughs> I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I live with you, man. I consider it a joke. It's just something he's saying, like everything else he's just been saying. He's just talking, but nothing he says lines up with what we see. Right, right. It benefits him. Mm -hmm. yeah. It don't benefit, benefit none of us. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you guys this. When we said that we wanted the church to be more supportive, kind of, I want to backtrack a little bit. What is your take on President Trump meeting with the different pastors, you know, from different communities? Do you feel like that was more so of a 
the church trying to, um, you know, assist with the movement or assist with us making progress in society? Or what, what's your guys' take on that? I mean, anything, honestly, that is that is done in a way that we're seeing President Trump do it, it just personally, and I don't like to talk about politics, but it just makes me think what the ulterior motive is in the end. Mm -hmm. And if the individuals that are meeting with him really truly understand what they're doing. Um, you know, he talks about he's been the best president for our society and our community. Um, you know, we, we know what that really is, right? And mm -hmm. I think, you know, just the whole thing with the pastors meeting with him Along with, uh, and I'll say it, I know we haven't touched on this, but the whole Kanye West thing, right? Um, now he's a presidential candidate and he has backing from the, you know, the Republican Party as well. Um, there's been word that that's been utilized in a way to take votes away from any type of Democratic candidate. Right. So when we're looking in instances like that and, and we're talking about that and we're having pastors or anybody that's from the African-American community that's gonna be speaking our behalf with the president um, that we currently have. It's, it's always gonna be a touchy subject and you always want to fully understand what that conversation is and what are the type of milestones or actual goals and accomplishments they're trying to get out of that. And that's one thing that I fail to see in all of these interactions that happen it's televised, right? You see it, it's across the news. They met, they're in these secret rooms or whatever, but there's ultimately no goal or accomplishment that comes out of it. It's, uh, again, it's not necessarily propaganda, but it's something that's just visually seen to make it look good. But then in the end, what does it actually do for our community? And when I don't see that, then I, I fail to see the value in those interactions with uh, the, the president. Anything you want to say? I um, I have a question actually. Um, I remember 2008, just graduated from high school, 18 years old, and I'm pressed to vote because my president's gonna be black. Like this is gonna happen. What can we do? I mean, we have the Black Lives Matter movement, and we know we all want Trump out. You know, out of office or, or however you feel about the presidential election, but what can we do for this generation? Like the ones that just turned 18, they, they have to vote. We, we have to, we have to be innovative in coming up with ways to push them to vote because a lot of people think that if I don't vote, like if I don't vote, it's okay. It's not really going to change anything. It's not going to shake anything up, but it matters. So what can we do to push this generation to be excited about voting? Now, that's a great question. Um, I think, you know, we, we saw the results from the last election. And even yeah. that statement, I, I'm not sure what all goes behind the scenes. I'll mm -hmm. just leave it right there. Right. Um, but the generation that we serve, the rising generation, millennials too, but especially Gen Z, is what they call the Y generation. Mm -hmm. So at one point you could just say, do this, vote. Mm -hmm. And that made sense to a people who was used to seeing certain things on the news consistently, where they walked marches with their mother or father, right? But as time went on, things kind of changed in a sense from a visual standpoint, media-wise. So now when you tell a 17-year-old, 18-year-old person, vote, in their minds, for what? Mm -hmm. It makes all the sense in the world to somebody like us or somebody older Right. But but to them, it, it, it really doesn't make it. They don't get it. And I know what I'm saying sounds like, really? No, no I, like I'm, I work yeah, in no. youth ministry and I yeah. know for many of them, it doesn't connect. Like, help me understand why I need to be involved. And so I think we got to take everybody who has influence, whether you got a cousin, you got nephews, uh, whatever your platform is. Yeah. My encouragement would be have conversations and explain why. This is no longer the generation. Go do this. Even my kids, five years old, why? Now, the, growing up, I couldn't say why. Ain't no Not why in Not the that. alphabet in my house growing <laughs> up. You know what I mean? But you learn over time that if you want somebody to carry something for, for themselves and not just for you, you got to give them why. 
Yeah. And I think yeah. you got to give them a why with substance. Yeah. Now, I'm not, what I'm saying is, an original, that, a response to that question when I was growing up was because people have died for the right for us to vote. Wow. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it's sad that it's gotten to this point, but I believe that it's, that's not enough. That response is not enough for the younger Ooh. generations. Um, and it, it says a lot, but, yeah. you know, we got to continue to find additional motivation um, to push the young ones to vote because as we, uh, you know, as you mentioned, not voting, you know, the past election had a tremendous effect, tremendous jokes. effect. And um, now we have someone who's not qualified in office. But if, move <laughs> if I could just say this to encourage, like, I'm gonna be honest, at a point, I even myself, I was like, man, what, what can I do, right? Um, beyond what I'm just naturally seeing. People mm -hmm. out with bullhorns and speaking and marching and things like that. And I've done those things, but I just asked the question, God, how could you use me? Right. And I know that seems like a basic question, but I think people need to ask that more. Mm -hmm. Because they, some people literally think, if I can't be the next Martin Luther King, where's my place? Right. Right. So they sit back and watch everybody else go. Mm -hmm. And so the vision God had given me, so I I love go-go music. Right. I love God. I love go-go music. And I had a go-go band. And so I pulled our team together. Uh, this year would have been our 10-year anniversary. I said, let's make a track. And so literally, uh, hopefully this week, we're going we're gonna to release it and go. And my goal is to allow that track to push everywhere it can to reach the rising generation to say, let's do something. You know what I mean? Because they're all about trendy and things popping. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But my encouragement to anybody, whether you paint, you draw, like, use what you have. Yeah. And bring, like, I'll tell you, bring what you have to lunch mm -hmm. and let God multiply. Right. Like, that's it. Yeah, can I, can I add to that? Because pretty course, much you said it. Use your influence. Yeah. And everybody thinks that if I'm not standing behind the pulpit, I don't have influence. If I don't have the bullhorn, I'm not inf influential. But you can be in the hair salon doing that girl hair, yep. just have a conversation. Because yeah. people love real. Mm -hmm. No matter where you are, they love real. Yeah. Like, don't just come to me when something happens. But keep continue talking to me about stuff. Right, right. And everybody loves social media. Put some music behind what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And somebody will catch on to it. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you guys said something really important. Um, and it's making sure that you stay in tune to your gift and using the gift that God gave you. Um, you know, to create change. So that's really important. Now, you know, to whoever's watching, whether you be young, old, um, seasoned, whatever it is, you know, stay in tune to your gift because, um, you know, your gift will make room for you, but it will also, you know, spark change. Um, so we, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're going to move on. We do, yeah, I'm not about to preach. So go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. You, you got sure? it? You stirred up a little bit? No, no, no. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. Um, so we touched on the Kanye thing. Um, what, is you, what are you guys' take on this? Well, Sam, I heard your take on, on the Kanye situation. <laughs> is it, for you, for you two, um, is there anything different that you see on um, Kanye? Especially because at one point he was kind of congruent with the church. Well, some, well like two seconds. some people will say that he was congruent with the church. He was, he was on the path of, you know, having the church behind him and, and things like that. So what did you guys take on that? It's a distraction. It's a That's distraction. what I consider it, because it was good. He has influence. Mm -hmm. So everybody's following Kanye, whatever he does, whether it's wearing winter coats, when it's 100 degrees weather, whatever he does, he knows people are going to follow him. So I feel like that was, whatever he does, it's a distraction in any type of, type of way. Because it's like, right now, if he gets everybody to vote for him, that's a small, uh, a small percentage of who will vote for Trump. Right. Meaning all of, he wants most of the black people to vote for Kanye. So if all of us vote for Kanye, then what about Trump? So th then you have the percentage the small percentage that's voting for Kanye, 
the non-voters, and then the Trumps. Trump will win because it's imbalance. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, a couple of things. Number one, um, I never want to kick a man when he's down. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my prayers go out to him of and his family. Because uh, for years, I think probably since his mother passed, we, we've seen the ups and the downs. Um, and, you know, I'm not no psychologist, but I've, I've mm-hmm. heard things. Mm-hmm. And I think it's valid, given yeah. his actions. Mm-hmm. That's number one. But number two, I think the reality is the church, our fault is, I think sometimes we aren't critical enough. We, we put grace on this pedestal and leave discernment in the back door, like backstage or something. Okay. You all know right. what I mean? Yeah. He said, well, just pray for me. Just, and all that's good. But the thing is, I think, so when he came out with the, the gospel music and all that, and mm-hmm. let me be first to say, I was cranking it in my car. Mm-hmm. I'll go crank it when I leave here. He be right. <laughs> he rocking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that, but but never did he come on. I, I didn't hear him during that time express a political views a lot. He was partnering with pastors, going on stages, and talking about Jesus. If I can be honest, which a lot of white pastors do too. Mm-hmm. They talk about Jesus. But when you actually get them behind closed doors and say, now what do you think about this? You actually get to hear what's in their hearts. And so I think we took what we heard uh, on, a, on a three to four minute track and equated that to what you said, the church, mm-hmm. just because he said God and Jesus. But we didn't give him time to really reveal, like, where do you still stand on this? Right, yeah. right. You know what right. I mean? We yeah. forgot that he was showing up with pictures with the red hat on, make, mm-hmm. make, make a part of America great again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think as the church, we, yes, grace needs to be high, but we also still got to use discernment. Yeah. And call a spade a spade and give stuff time. Don't go with the next trending thing so you can get X amount of people in your church and raise an offer. No shade to any pastors who did because everybody has their own agendas. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying we got to be more careful as, a, as, a, as believers. That's my, that's my okay. take. All right. Okay. Um, so let me switch lanes. Let's get off of Mr. West. Um. There was a recent passing. Um, Senator John Lewis passed away. And, of course, President Trump, being the president that he is, decided not to attend um, the ceremony. I don't think he really um, offered any condolences or, you know, any words at all. Do you take that as disrespect? Or do you think for someone like President Trump, that was a way of him being respectful because he knew we had nothing respectful to say. Um, For me, you would only take it as disrespect if there was an expectation that he understood what uh, John Lewis had done for the community and really genuinely, you know, thought about the things and the impact to, you know, the African-American society. So I I, I don't take it as disrespect because that's giving, um, giving him too much credit, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to be honest. Um, and I also think, I mean, it, it probably was a good decision for him not to show because then that would, if he showed up, then that would be in genuine, but there wasn't an expectation for him to show up anyway because he probably doesn't care, and, and obviously he showed that with his actions. So I don't think it's disrespect um, just because we're you're, you're be high, holding him to a higher standard or an expectation that he would understand what his actions um, implicated, and obviously he doesn't based upon the things that he does now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. You would think that somebody in that position would understand not just what... Um, you know, this, uh, you know, John Lewis has done for the society, but other things that have happened in the, in the society as well and act accordingly and, again, through actions uh, have shown that that's not the case. Okay. All right. Did you want to say something, Pastor Stuff? Well, I, I was just going to say for, for us as a people, black people to be specific, mm-hmm. um, I, I just think, like, when we see stuff like that, of course, we know... He's not just doing that because that's that's just where he stands. We know he's sending signals. 
and the signals that it sends is to other bigots that things like this is okay. It's, it's another way of saying um, I'm, I'm, I'm validating our lack of care and honor for their community, regardless what a person has done, even if they literally have shed blood, mm -hmm. right? And so I think we just got to continue to be mindful of that um, and understand that this that that's more of a reason why we got to push the agenda to vote and right. be out um because that's why you see these videos of people of, of as far as police brutality think uh i know y'all saw the one with the lady who almost ran another black white lady ran another black lady over in the parking lot because they're looking at him basically getting permission to do stuff yeah. like this like right. this all right and so it's on us to kind of be able to view that and, and step our game up like this this is the reason we have to get out and vote this is the reason we have to use our platform because we got a guy like him giving other people permission to be more free uh with their privilege mm -hmm. okay all right so you know i'm glad you brought up um a point um you mentioned how uh there was a situation where uh, a young lady was almost ran over so um, not knowing whether or not, I'm pretty sure you guys have, you know, you, young African-American males in society, so I'm sure at some point you've encountered um, some type of actions from our counterparts that were uh, based off our race. Um, they were, you know, whatever the case was, whether they be prejudice or, um, you know, just blatant racist. How do you respond how do you remain spiritual and respond in a way that is not of God? Because it's a lot of people, I'm going to be honest, I'm asking this for myself. I'm not even really asking for anybody <laughs> that's watching because that's one thing that I'm worried about. Um, you know, I have, I know that when every day that I breathe, every day that I live, I don't live for just myself. Um, I carry a name that has been built up, built up by others before me. And I don't want to respond in a way where it hurts the people that I love um, and hurts the community that I associate myself with. So with that being said, how, would you res how do you guys respond to situations like that? I'll go. It's, you, you touched on it. I represent more than just myself. So first, I have to think that all the time. Mm -hmm. I represent my last name, my bloodline, the, human, the black race, and a black man. So if I respond wrong, I represent every black man, because that's what they do with the media, right? Black right. man responds, yeah. dot, dot, dot. That, yeah. So I, res I think about that all the time, like how my response is gonna represent a whole nation of people. So I do that, and then I like to laugh. So if I feel like I'm being disrespected, I would literally just laugh, because that's just my personality. Right. So you use your personality. What that is, if somebody's coming to you wrong, the best thing they say, walk away. Mm -hmm. And if you can't walk away, make sure somebody's viewing what's going on so that you have your evidence of what's happening. Because with police brutality, we see it all the time. <laughs> like, and it's becoming a normal yeah. mm -hmm. because it's getting captured now before it wasn't getting captured at first. Right. But now that it's in the storefront, we need to step up and be like, hey, this isn't okay but we have to still remain right. We got to remain respectful. Mm -hmm. So with anger inside, we have to control our anger. That's why they tell us to do stuff, like find what makes you happy. Do things, have your day, have your day that you do stuff for you because if you let that stuff build up, you're going to respond in a way that we're not going to be pleased of. Did any you guys have, or was that about the same? I just want to just touch on something really quick. I've, I've recently sat in on uh, some of my uh, my friends and, and brothers. They've done podcasts, right, on, on social injustice with everything that's going on in the community. And uh, they've had all races on there, right? And one of the things that I've learned, and I actually had a conversation with my younger brother about this and, and my family and friends, is just making sure that we're educated 
right? So when we're getting pulled over, we understand what our rights are. We understand how to conduct ourselves or in any other situation or scenarios. Because I think that that's important because that'll allow us, one, to be, you know, more calm and reserved and confident in our approach when uh, we are being attacked or we are put in situations where things like, you know, police brutality happen. And, you know, I was I was recently pulled over and, yeah, I was I was speeding. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> but there was cars that were around me that were going the same speed as me. And I think just because, you know, I have a black car and I had tinted windows, um, I was pulled over by a state trooper and I had everything in my car. I did everything that I was asked. And um, I was I was polite. I was confident. I was calm. I had a discussion with them and I uh, was able to get away with a warning. But in so many situations and instances like that, because we see what happens, and I'm not gonna lie, when I saw those sirens go off, my heart was beating fast because you know things were happening in the society, but um, I try to keep a cool head, and, and I had just gotten off a podcast earlier that week where um, there was discussion around, you know, there was different sheriffs and police that were on that call, and again, all different races, and understanding you know, what your rights are. And just being in that podcast and listening to that helped me in that scenario. And I think that's important um, to do is to really understand and educate ourselves on all the different policies and procedures on how to conduct ourselves in situations like that. And not just understand it for ourselves, but you know, teach our community, uh, teach our, our younger ones about it so that if they get confronted with that, at least they know in the back of their mind, they understand where their rights are and it could help um, get themselves, you know, out of a situation or defuse a situation. All right. Man, if I could pick, I say, I echo that, man, being educated. Um, when you asked a question, I thought about, like, man, about a month ago, my family, we were at a park. And, you know, we were on the other side. We, we not, not near the gate, the entrance anymore. And it was getting late. We didn't hear nobody say park is closed and anything like that. Mm -hmm. So by the time we leave, the, all the gates are closed. There's no way out, and it's getting dark. And so I call the, the, the local police there in that park. And the guy literally is like, well, it's too late. My guys are gone. <laughs> You're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> I'm like, sir, I got my two kids here. Right. It's getting late. My wife, we uncomfortable. Boy, you just going to, there's nothing I can do. I'm like, hold up, you know what I mean? Wow. And 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 so at this point, thankfully, I knew uh, knew a guy who worked for PG. This was a different. This was a different unit. I called right at the first time. Mm -hmm. He told me what to do. Gave me another person's number, uh, and she said, "I'm sending somebody out there right now. They're gonna cut the chains if they got to." And they was able to trump their particular authority. But it took me having to do that. Right. To just to have my family say, this dude didn't care whether we stayed out there all night or not. Yeah. And I'm saying, bro, you could have did the same thing. But And so the, when you ask the question, like, what keeps us, I don't know if I was calm or not. You might got to ask my wife that <laughs> night. But what keeps me coming back, though, is like I think about how God told Moses, like, you got to, he told Moses to keep knocking on the door that he knew he wouldn't open yet. But you got to keep going back. And that's the motivation that I have. Like, Stefan, God may send you, when he sends you, sometimes there's going to be re rejection. But at some point, a release is going to happen. Right. And God is sending releases all over. We, not, we may not be able to see it sometimes because we'd be like, man, where is God? And we're looking for the big thing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he's in the ballroom. He's, he's writing re legislation that we can't see. Right. He's doing stuff in other ways that we can't see it. So we just got to keep on moving and not be discouraged by rejection. God is faithful to send release. That's that's my hope at the end of the day. That was good. Yeah, that was. That was good. Yeah, that was that was the one right <laughs> that there. Was that was that was the one. That was the one. Happy Sunday. <laughs> um. So with that being said, um, that is the conclusion of today's panel, uh, discussing where we go now. Um. If. I know today was, uh, a different format of, our normal service. Uh, and what we are accustomed to here at Carolina Church. Um, but it's something that us as the young adult team felt yeah. was needed. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to to be in the community and, and doing all these great things, but it's another way, it's another thing to know what you are doing 
um, having the proper guidance and also knowing how to respond to certain issues that are going on. Uh, as you heard today, it's, it's important that we n know the, the, the laws, know what we are entitled to as far as what we're allowed to do while we're in the community. It's important to know that. It's important to know that you do have people in your corner. Um, it's important to know how to conduct yourself when you find yourself in situations knowing that we do not have the certain lead way that others in the community have. Um, so with that being said, if today you are looking for a relationship with Christ, you know, you, you said that, you know, I heard you guys out. I heard you guys talk about this important issue in society. If today you are looking for a relationship with Christ, all we ask you to do is type in a relationship in the comment section. Whether you're watching on Facebook, Church Online, Periscope, all we're asking is you just type in relationship. And someone from the church will get in contact with you about your recent, about your decision immediately and offer you guidance on how to further your relationship with Christ. Or maybe you already have a relationship. Maybe some things happen. Um, you may have encountered a situation that you felt like God should never put you in. You may have encountered someone in the community where it's like, you know, this, if God was in my corner, why would he allow me to go through a situation based off the color of my skin? Don't worry, don't waver. And if today is the day you want to restore that relationship, all we're asking you to do is type in restoration. And just like relationship, someone will contact you immediately about your recent decision and provide you information on how to move forward. Or maybe you have a relationship. Maybe it's in good tact. Um, don't need restoration, but you need a church home. Yeah. You know, type in membership. Carolina Church is a, is a great church home. You know, I, I will scream that all the way down the street in the back, but there are other great churches around the world. And what Carolina Church will do is we will help you find the right fit for you. Yeah. You know, not, not every church is for, you know, not every church is for everybody. Yeah. You know, there are, uh, there's a certain thing for finding the, the best fit for you church-wise. So type in membership and Carolina will, one of the members from Carolina will address you, will contact you, and will help you move forward in your decision as well. All right? Without further ado, the senior pastor of this home, Pastor Anthony Moore. It is, it is so important that you know that though it's the same fight, it's just a different day. But what helps us in the fight is not our own strength. What helps us in the fight is knowing that we have a relationship with God. And what God does is he somehow turns up the process where literally where it looks like they have the majority God will turn it around and allow the minority to win the battle. And so I want to challenge you today to know that it might be the same fight, it's a different day, but the God that we serve is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forevermore. I don't know who you are today, but I, I don't want you to leave today without surrendering your life unto the Lord Jesus Christ, because no matter what happens in this world, God is still in control. I wish I could have somebody right there right now. Just go ahead and type that in the chat box. God is still in control. I, I know our heads are heavy and I know our burdens are difficult and I know there are tears in our eyes and there's frustrations in our hearts, but I need you to know God is still in charge. 
He knows what he's doing. 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 There's no emergencies with God. He already knows what the outcome is going to be. Let me just give y'all a little secret. I fast forward. Whoop! I give you the revelation. I need you to know we win. I need you to know that, y'all. I need you to know we win. We win. We win. We win. We win. That's what I need you to know today, that we win. And you can win being a part of Christ today. If you only trust him. Trust me. Come on, I need you to do that today. Trust me. Regardless of who you are. If you regardless of what you're going through. Come on, I need you to do it today. Make that decision for Christ. Relationship. Restoration. Membership. Trust me. Hallelujah. If you would only, only trust in me. Trust. Trust in me. Hallelujah, God. Trust me. I want you to help me today to give a round of applause to all of our participants on this panel. I'm grateful for our own Joshua Moore, Lady Cynthia and our son. We're so honored that he is letting the Lord use him and developing the fight and in the fight. I'm grateful for him. Minister Lauren Salters, y'all come on, help me thank God for him. And, and Brother Samuel Hale the second. Samuel Hale the second. We're so honored to have all three, but I'm also honored to have our guests on today, um, Brother Stefan Lindsay. Praise the Lord for Stefan, Pastor Stefan Lindsay. He's the youth pastor over at Zion Church. I'm youth and young adult. I'm also grateful to have Javante Wheeler from Judah Christian Center. Thank you so very much, man, for your presence on today and for being a part of our panel discussion. Different format, but God is still central in our discussion. One more time, would y'all help me thank God for them all over the place, wherever you are, in your own home. Just help me thank God for them. These young people leading the way, our young adults. I'm also grateful today for our youth and young adult pastor, May Reed, for all that she's seeking to do to make things happen. Now listen, I need you to go ahead and get your, get your bread, your crackers, I want you to go ahead and get your juice, your liquid, whatever it is. We're going we're gonna to honor God today, honor the Lord. We're going to honor God in remembering what he did for us. We're going to partake in communion on today. I want you to be certain to be prepared that you might share with us in remembrance. While we're getting ready to remember him, I want to encourage all about membership that we in fact want to make sure that we're honoring God with the tithe. We're bringing God those offerings. We cannot do ministry without you. Thank you for your consistent support in helping us to continue to bring ministry, not only to your house, but to the community. Not only to our community, but to the city. Not only to the city, but to the state, to the world. We're being able to bring ministry because of your support and do ministry because of your support. So we honor God with the tithe and the offerings. You can do it even now. I do want to also encourage you to know the members of our church and for those who are viewers of ours and love to worship with us. Listen, we're getting ready to celebrate one, 80, our 80th year of existence of Carolina Church. 80 years, you all, we have been around and been doing what God's called us to do, and to God we give praise. I need somebody in the chat box. I need y'all to celebrate that for 80 years. My Lord, my Lord, that's a long time, but we've been faithful on the battlefield. I've asked every member of our church and every supporter of this ministry, I need you to sacrifice a special gift 
for our anniversary, $180. I've asked every member of our ministry to do it. I've asked you also not to pull from your tithe, not to pull from your regular offerings, but to at least make it a sacrificial gift. And for every one of you all, our anniversary is October, the third Sunday in October. We're going to celebrate 80 years. And I want to be certain that you will be included in being located and saying, hey, I made sure that I marked that anniversary with a sacrificial gift of $180. Today is a good day. You can do it even now. Hey, before I, before I turn you loose, before we do our uh, communion, I want to pray for a moment for members of our congregation, for members in our community, for persons in our city. I want to pray. Uh, there are persons who need prayer today, persons who need prayer. Jackie Thomas, we're praying for you. We're praying that God would literally heal those who are sick. Type your name in the box for me, if you will. Come on, type your name in that box. Pastor, pray for me. I might not get all of the names, but let me tell you who will get them. The Lord already knows it. He knows what you need even before you ask. But I want you to type your name in the box because I have intercessors who are watching even now, waiting that they might begin to intercede on your behalf. There's a team of prayer warriors waiting to pray for you. Go ahead, type it in the box if you will. Pastor, I need prayer. I'm praying for every member of our ministry. I'm praying for those in our community, those in our city. We're praying for our political leaders that they'll hear the voice of God and do what God's called them to do. Come on, I need you to type that in the box for me. I'm praying today. Kelly, praying for you, sweetie. And watch God change things. Believing God's turning things around for us. Hallelujah. Samuel, hail. I'm praying for you today. Hallelujah. You pray for me. I'm believing God's going to turn it around for you. And watch God change things. Colette, I'm praying for you today. Only like I know he can. Believing God's going to meet your needs. I pray for you. Earl Turner, you praying for you, son. For I'm believing today. And watch God change things. For every one of you celebrating a birthday, God has given you a new life. Praying for you today. I pray Hallelujah. For you. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, God, you know us so well until you've numbered the strands of hair on our head. You know us so well, God, that you even know what we need even before we ask you for it. You know our desires, you know our wishes. And so even now, I pray, God, that you'll make a way for us. You've said in your word, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. And God, we stand in faith today. You told me, God, if I had the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, I could speak to the mountain, and the mountain has to be thou removed. So even now, God, whatever the mountain is, do it now. God, move the mountain. If it's financial, move it. If it's sickness, move it. If it's emotional, move it. If it's depression, move it. If it's mental, move it. Even now, God, move the mountain. And Father, I pray that if you determine in your will not to move the mountain, give us strength to climb it. In the name of Jesus, Father, hear our prayer. I pray now for every person in the sound of my voice, needs are being met, lives are being changed. Transformation is yet coming forth. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. I dare you. Come on, put your hands together and give God the best praise you can. I dare you to shout glory, hallelujah, right where you are. God will change it. He'll fix it for you. He'll fix it for you. He'll fix it for you.
that um, on the night that our Lord was betrayed <laughs> that he took bread he broke it gave it to his disciples said to them take ye eat all of it it represents my body Minister James I'm blown away by this because he on his way to die for us, he thought about us. On the night that he was betrayed, he thought about us. And rather than thinking about himself, he knew that if he died, he was going to save mankind. So this bread represents, this cracker represents his body. I'm going to ask you now, break that cracker, place it in your mouth now. Bible then says this, y'all, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, drink ye all of it. This represents my blood. Jesus knew that the only way to redeem us back to God is to have to be the shedding of blood. I, I hear Lady Cynthia, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood, but the blood of Jesus. Of Jesus. What can make me whole again? What can make me whole again? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Shall we now bow and drink together? Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow and no other found I know. Nothing but the blood. Lady Cynthia and I want to thank you so very much for joining us in our worship experience. We thank our youth and young adults for leading us in this worship. Thank you so very much for your, your, your gift and tenacity. So grateful for all of our students who are going off to college. We're praying for you, covering you with the hedge of protection. Listen, we need you to stay safe. We want you to stay home as much as you can. Stay connected. Stay Carolina strong. Listen, Carolina, on your mark, get set. Let's grow. God bless you. Love you much. See you next time. At the cross where my Savior died, down where.
if I'm cringing from sin, I cry. 